And what about uh, money hacks? So I had put down a thing on the notes. I said, I want to know. You have all this like corpus of content, you know, just tons of tons of material, philosophies, frameworks, t- tactics, exercises, blah blah blah. What would be the three sort of money hacks that you think most people just don't do? But if you could get them to do it, you'd feel good about it. So, what are your kind of like, what are your three finance related or money related um, hacks that people should be doing that get you a big out big outcome with not a huge input? Well, I'm glad you asked because most of my founder friends don't even invest in the market. I would say over 50% of them. What, what does you that understand mean? how we know? What, what does that even mean? That's so, I, that's so crazy to me. I don't understand it. Yeah, well, I'm about to tell you because these guys make me want to wring their neck. So these are founders who have done very well in their business. Either they have a high profit business generating considerable amounts every year or um, to some extent they've had an exit and now they're doing their next thing. I go, hey, what are you doing with your money? <clears throat> they go, oh, you know, I'm putting it into my business. I go, cool. Like, what about investing? They go, no, 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 no. I can make more money in the in my own business. This is where my voice starts to tighten up and I bring out my hand as if I'm about to wring their neck. I go, how many businesses do you know that are still around 50 years later? And they go, well, not many. I go, do you think it would be good to maybe take a little off the table and put some in the market where you can get really good returns? And it just boggles their mind because they've never thought about it. They see themselves as an entrepreneur, not a boring mom and pop investor. That is a very, very costly belief that they hold. So I always tell them like, hey, take a little bit, put in the market, boring, Vanguard funds, do the stuff. Of course, they haven't read my book. Do the stuff in the book. And when you do that, you will be wealthier than you can possibly imagine. And you, your risk will be decreased dramatically. Um, Sean, where, Sam, what do you think when you hear that? Where do, so I follow a lot of what you say. I've read your book. Sarah, my wife has read your book. You're going to talk about like talking to your partner once a month, things like that. I do that all. But I want to ask you, Sean, investing in the market. So Sean and I are almost complete opposites when it comes to money. Not complete opposites for everything regarding money, but our risk profiles are very different. Sean, mm-hmm. do you invest just in normal index funds at all? Yeah, I have some in index funds. Uh, I basically have a basket of technology companies that a few years ago I said, okay, what companies do I think over a 10 to 20 year period just have, they have an advantage today that's just going to compound for 10 to 20 years. And I'm happy to, if I'm wrong with that, okay, I'm wrong with that, but I'm going to have this basket of basically six companies that I think, um, that I think are positioned to do that. And that was like Amazon, it was Google. It wasn't like some, I didn't take a genius, right? It was just like, I think these companies essentially are monopolies that, uh, that are riding this wave of like the internet and mobile phones. They'll, they'll do well. And uh, so I hold that. So I'd say about 30% of my money is in that that selection of stocks. I have probably 1%. You can't import a camera or, or the import tax on a camera that can record above 60 minutes is taxed at a, a video camera versus a picture camera. Therefore, you can't record for more than 60 minutes wow. on a point and shoot camera. Are you kidding me? How this stupid. is crazy. Well, Sam... Yeah. Much respect. That was very. Now I just need you to tell me what to do about it, but we can do that off. Yeah, that was impressive. Yeah, yeah. That was- so basically, what happened to listeners? So it, Ramit's camera went off, and this is like a weird fact, but uh, point and shoot cameras cannot record above sixty minutes because they would be taxed differently. Well, it it, it went camera. down even better. He goes, "I know what happened. Uh, we just hit sixty minutes, didn't we? Yeah. And you have a, a point and shoot camera, don't you? Yeah. It's from Asia, isn't it?" Yeah. And it's like, oh shit, Sam, Sam, what are you doing? How do you know all this? <laughs> <laughs> Sam was like Mike Wallace right there. Sam, yeah, that I, was like, I, I have a lot of respect for you, bro. Yeah. Wow. Well, I, all right. we, we, we went through this. So, Sean, you were saying that you have 30% in index funds. Where's the no, rest? No, I, Not I even index funds. 30% fund. in a handful of tech stocks, uh, about six tech stocks. And then I have about 40 ish percent in crypto. I have a small amount, maybe 1%, 2% still left in a Vanguard fund. And then uh, what's left? Uh, then I have well, I'm not counting just like investments in private businesses like startups and stuff. That that would be different. But yeah, the rest is like cash and miscellaneous random other bets. Is that crazy to you, Rami? That that's crazy to me. I'm not disrespecting <laughs> you, Sean, because whatever it's floats like, your boat, floats your boat. That's so different from how I yeah. how I do stuff. This I'm is at- like a, it's like a guy going to a buffet, okay? And you both go to a buffet, and then you go, hey, let's just let's meet up at the table. 
<laughs> so you get here, you know, you get some rice, you get some chicken, some vegetables, and the other guy comes back with three different plates. 90% of all the plates have chocolate cake on them. And then he has two pieces of white fish and, uh, you know, one piece of lobster that he cut in half and he threw the, threw it on the floor. You go, what are you eating, bro? He goes, that's what I like. <laughs> that's what I like. <laughs> <laughs> why? Because it's not vanguarded out. It's not indexed out. Is that why? It's not, not even remotely. It's, it's the not opposite even... of diversification. Now, again, if if you want to be entertained, that's awesome. It's very entertaining. No, I I don't. Uh, I think diversification. There's a great great quote. Diversification is for losers. Uh, that's how I feel about diversification. That's how most tech uh, founders feel, and the cost of their belief is vast it costs them typically millions and millions of dollars they don't care though this is what this is my point sam it's, it's not they, they don't care, care. They, they go, oh, i'm when, gonna when put it in my right. own business and i can but, angel invest i mean some, me, of, some so, of the greatest investors look, the greatest investors in the world do take concentrated positions not diversified positions so yeah, are, you, let's, let's, are you one of the greatest investors in the world i know what i know in my sphere i'm an expert in my field and so i feel confident and comfortable investing in my field i'm not saying i'm mm-hmm. one of the greatest investors in the world but i know that Within the technology sector, I would bet on myself. And that's what I've chosen to do, right? Within the technology sector, I, don't, I feel like I have an edge compared to uh, what I can get sort of in the passively diversified index fund world. And yeah, it's Ruby, out, you're, right? Last 10 years, I've compounded way faster than, than you know, the Vanguard ETF or SP500 generically has. Your strategy, Rami, I am the exact same as you. I'm looking at my portfolio now. It's basically 90% index funds or it includes HubSpot stock, which is not indexed, but it's it's 90% um, publicly traded stock, most of which is 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 index funds. But what bothers me, Ramit, not bothers me, it just shocks, boggles my mind about you. How can you not see that there is another way to do it, which are the crazy people like Sean, when you and I both have tons of friends that are these crazy people that have made these ridiculous bets where they only have 100 grand, and they put 90 grand into crypto and it turns into $100 million. Like you and I know many of these people that have done these stupid things or they appear stupid and they totally work out. Um, well, there's definitely lots of different ways to achieve it. So, you know, what I talk about in my book, there's, there's lean fire, there's fat fire, there's buying real estate, there's passive investing and on and on and on. So, um, if you are optimizing for entertainment, great. If you're optimizing for concentrated risk, great. Then that portfolio makes a lot of sense. If you are optimizing for a diversified, low-cost, predictable return and mitigating risk, then, of course, that allocation makes exactly zero sense. So we want to know the game that we are playing. And Sean, you you articulated it very well. What I think the next question that a savvy investor would ask is, what are the risks that I am incurring? And this is typically where you get people, especially a lot of crypto bros who go, oh, like, what do I care? I'm, I'm swinging for the fences. And you go, okay, that's cool. What if it goes wrong? Now, if you're 21, uh, you know, th- your risk profile is low, right? Worst case, you know, you get a job, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you're older, if you have kids, if you have a mortgage, or if you simply do not want to go back to living on ramen noodles, then suddenly you start to think about risk differently. Now, here's the catch. Most people, doesn't matter if they're 35 or 50, They don't truly understand risk until something bad happens. And when that happens, they do not take a look in the mirror and go, oh shit, my allocation that I chose 15 years ago was poor. They go, fuck the government or they rip me off. I need regulation, even though I called for no regulation for the last 15 years. So unfortunately, this is one of those things that cannot be taught until it is experienced and the market will go down. Tech will not always go up. This is a predictable cycle. The last 10 years have been extraordinary. There's no doubt about that. Even an index investor made over 15% annualized returns, which is insane. But the music doesn't keep playing. I agree with you. I, I strongly disagree with people. Uh, well, which, okay, look, I, look, hold on, hold on. It, 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 it's, there's no I, right answer without no. saying, what are you trying to do, right? What is your goal? Because if my goal is to make X and your goal is to make Y, then we're going to have totally different strategies. Like a different but strategy if, would work for, for a different person. What is your if goal? If I say I'm comfortable with this much risk or I have it, I have knowledge about this industry, maybe my answer would be different or maybe my, my strategy would be different. Um, 
you know, do you think so our think goals he, are different? Yeah, I think our goals are different for sure. What's your goal? Not just not just the absolute money goal, right? Clearly, our goals are different because you you intentionally avoid risk, right? Like you know the appeal of a lot of these investments, but you don't want to lose, right? You your risk tolerance is lower, and you are yeah. you are you would feel worse if you lost then you would feel good if you win. And I'm the opposite. I would feel worse if I didn't follow my convictions than if I But, but uh, what's your goal? Like, is there a point where you'll say, I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't want to take more risk? Yeah, of course. Over time, it'll shift, right? As the, as the principle gets large enough, then you don't need to have so much concentration because you can have more, you can play, play it safer and you can take a smaller, a, a lower return will still yield, will still let you live a lifestyle that you want. But if the principal's small and you're trying to live off four percent gains or five percent gains or seven percent annual gains, um, you're going to have to sit there for forty years. And like, I'm just not interested in doing that. And I think another thing is like, what's your other the other situation is like, how much income do you bring in? I bring in a lot of income, so I'm not really worried about okay, what happens if the market goes down either temporarily or even permanently. It's like if I'm bringing in a healthy income and I'm young, uh, I don't really have to worry too much about protecting this investment asset. First, I can play riskier than my dad who no longer can generate significant income and he needs to play it safer. I th- yeah, I, we have different we have different we have different goals. Yeah. I think um if you if you look at bodybuilders for example who are competitive, eventually all roads lead to chicken and rice. All roads lead to chicken and rice. Why? Because when you look at macronutrients and when you look at where you're getting the highest bang for your buck, all professional bodybuilders essentially eat the same. Okay, I'm being a little general here, but that's the case. When you look at investing, if you look at the research, and yes, you clarify your goals, but um, remember that in investing, a lot of people go personal finance is personal. Actually, most people are mostly the same. Let me say that again. Most people are mostly the same. They mostly want to make good money, be able to travel a little bit, etc. So unless you are a wild outlier, then all roads lead to low cost, long-term investing. Again, there are outliers. Sean, it sounds like you've thought that through, Uh, but the principles of chicken and rice and low cost investing are the same. Now, what are those principles? I talk about that in chapter six. You know, there's a lot of people tossing around these things about, well, you know, I chose this because like the market went down a little bit. So I put my money in here and like over time, all those timing the market things have been blown out. There are the rare exceptions who win. Uh, Sam, you were referring to that. You know, we know some people who have won. Yeah. You know, we also know a lot of people who lost a lot of money and they disappear. They don't brag about their Russian fund that they picked anymore. That's called survivorship bias. So it's important that we know the entire game of play and then we choose Otherwise, it's very emotionally tempting to be like, I'm a genius, I have an edge, et cetera. But we have to all remember, we are individual investors. And even the pros who do this for a living with a bunch of other smart people and expensive technology, they fail to beat the market 80 plus percent.